This is a breadboard linear amplifier I made using a couple of 572B tubes. I'll get right up on it there. And uh, so obviously everything's uh, made from scratch here. The coil, except for the capacitors and so forth, the RF choke here is made here. And I just kind of put this together just to kind of experiment a little bit. I'll introduce the uh, thing to you. Over here we have a uh, microwave oven transformers. I am using a microwave oven transformer for the filament and the way I've got it set up is I can get uh, 6 volts for the 572's right here with a center tap which is that point right there and if I move this mess, i got to be careful uh, right here is 10 volts. I'm not using that for any other filaments right now but that does work and that provides DC for the um, oh, there it is for the relay. Uh, this thing's sitting at about oh, 2800 volts. It's in standby. I am driving it <coughs> with a um, this probably looks familiar ICOM um, IC718 with the <coughs> MFJ antenna tuner for the input match to the amplifier and that hooks up right here on these two BNC's. The input uh, from the radio goes here and then of course it goes through this part uh, which of course goes to these cables go to the antenna tuner. I'm just being brief about it you can see where the cables go. And the antenna tuner here serves as a um, input match to the 572B's. This is my grid current meter. And that one right there is the plate current. And over here I've got a dummy load. And got, uh, let's see if I can light, get 10 resistors. Uh, at like 500 ohms each. 500 ohms at 175 watts. Well that makes 1750 watts total. Nice dummy load of an old transmitter. Here we have an extremely large uh, transformer, power transformer that came from a uh, broadcast transmitter, 250 watt transmitter. And I have used two cables here to provide the high tension which goes over here to the board and I'm not going to touch it. I'll point at it. There's two microwave oven diodes of the high performance type and there's my capacitors. I had a variac here to provide uh, the right amount of power uh, to the transformer so the B plus doesn't go too high. Let's have a look at the B plus now. I've got my meter down here on the floor which if I take the high voltage probe I'm going to go right there to that capacitor and without load it's looking at 2850 volts thereabouts. Now I'm going to try the dubious task of keying the microphone <laughs> probably between my legs probably better there. All right, the microphone is keyed. Now the voltage drops to 2500 or 2518. And we got a grid current of about 50 milliamps. And we got a plate current of, can't see it very well there, but it's about 330. Now to check the power, I need to move a couple of connections. I had them already here. So I take this out, if I can do it with one hand and I put in these here. This is a real low budget way of doing it but <clears throat> I key the mic and let me get out of the glare here. There is 242, 243 volts of dead key. Of course we can see it on the scope over here too. Uh, there it is. That's, uh, that's what it looks like on the scope. In a minute we'll try the sideband side of it. So we key it up again and we get uh, 200, over four, 243 volts, we'll say. I come over here to the trusty dusty calculator and we do some math. 
So we're going to try to get the RMS value of, that's peak DC by the way, with a rectifier and a capacitor. So I will enter in 243 and we're going to take RMS value which is times 0.707 Okay, there's our RMS value voltage. We're going to multiply that or square it, 171.801. So let me put that in. Like I said, this is kind of the tough way around it. Now, they're doing the E squared over R. And we're going to get RMS out of this. So our dummy load, I checked it earlier, is actually 52 ohms. So we're going to divide this figure by 52. There's divide by. And... Uh, 5, 2 equals, there's our power, 567 watts. And that's dead carrier into the load. So let's see how it modulates. Everything's on standby now. We're drawing a uh, plate current of about, I don't know, it's not showing too well on the, on the camera here, but it's, it's more like 40 milliamps. So you divide that by 2. So each tube is probably seeing around 20 milliamps as it sits. So now I come over here to the rig, which you can't see it in the light very well, but I'm going to change modes from RTTY to sideband. And now we'll see the magic happen. Testing one, two, testing. All right, there it is, it's working. Testing one, two, three. And of course over here on the meter, that's what it's showing. So let's look at it in the scope. That tells us a lot. Testing one, two, three. Testing one, two, three. KD5, MHQ. Hello, testing one, two, three, four, five. Hello, five, five, five. It looks very nice at peaks. And of course, if you whistle it, that looks pretty good too. With a couple of these tubes, uh, would very easily produce. Or, uh, well, it's uh, easily produced 500 watts, but if I had two more tubes, it would uh, easily produce uh, 1,000 watts output with enough carrier, or with enough uh, supply current and so forth. And, oh yeah, I also used a fan blowing down on the tubes from an old microwave oven, as you can see here. Anyway, let's see if we can make a comparison to the uh, s driver uh, signal from the rig uh, oh I gotta unplug the uh, relays here so I've unplugged the relays or the, the keys the thing and I gotta put the antenna tuner on bypass which I just did so now we're again we're looking into a dummy load and I'm gonna put the rig on um, RTTY just to get a nice key down condition. Now uh, there, I don't think you can see that, but that is, a, you know, if this thing will focus, it's about an SWR of 1.2 to 1. That's really good. Now we go over to the so-called watt meter, which is just an arbitrary reading, and we see that it's there on the scale. Don't look at the watts, that has nothing to do with anything, because it's not really calibrated. But that's about, oh, 50 or 60 watts out. Now, we flip that, the tuner in position, and come and plug the, uh, the, uh, the relays, the key relays on the thing. And we key it again, and let's watch the output on that. Place. Wow, it goes way over. So, you can at least get an idea of what the difference is. And again, uh, the SWR looks pretty darn good going into the... Uh, rig. It's it's probably about 1.3 to 1. I could trim it back a little more, but actually it's very good. So this is the homemade linear by KD5 MHQ, and it's dangerous as hell. <laughs> but I just know what not to touch and what to touch, and uh, there it is. The uh, 550 watt linear using 500 572B tubes in a grounded grid linear configuration.